Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build a web app with Python and Flask, which is a micro framework for Python. And that's the page we're going to build. So our page will display the page, uh, the image of the day, which we'll pull from a NASA API website. And then below the image will display its title, credits if there are any, and the description of the image. Now to follow through this tutorial, you'll have to sign up with NASA API. You go to api.nasa.gov and there is this nice little example JavaScript, then you scroll down and there is a section where you can get your API key. So you type in your first name, last name, email, you sign up for it, and then via email you get an API key which you're going to use throughout the tutorial. So once again, because this is dynamical, every day your page will display a different image, which is the image for that given day, NASA website. All that will be dynamic. Let's get to it. I created this empty folder for a project. Let's go to that folder. Now, let's create a virtual environment. We'll call it Flask Env, and then we'll create a virtual environment with Python 3. That takes a few moments. While that is being installed, we'll go to official flask documentation I'll post a link to this page below my video we'll just copy over this minimal application right so the virtual environment has been created for us I'll just go to textpad something any text editor really this is our folder now we'll create a file which we'll call my flask app dot Py. So it's a Python file. Um, right now we'll paste what we just copied over from the Flask page. Now right off the bat it uses the Flask module which we don't have yet. So we'll go back to our virtual environment, we'll activate it by typing source uh, my Flask VM bin slash activate and now we say pip install flask uh, okay that was an error flask and that takes a few moments now let's go back to the text file and see what's happening here so here we instantiate the, our app now this decorator root basically it says that this function will be fired whenever we hit the root of our website and now there are a few lines I want to add to this minimal application and those are the standard Python entry point. So we say name equals main right, um, app run. That's it. And that way just adding those two lines allows us to run our PyFlask app at the script because otherwise it's a bit unstraightforward. So that is that and that is ready to run. Flask creates a web server for us. Uh, let's see. So this is our virtual environment, this is our app and from the terminal we can easily run our app. Okay, and it says that it started a web server on port 5000, which is default port for Flask, and this is our local host. Let's go back to browser, paste that link, hello world, right? So that's what this code says. Whenever we load the root of our website, which is just like nothing, display hello world. Now let's make it a little bit more complicated than that and we'll add the concept of templates and I will go back to console and we'll create a folder which is called template and in template 
uh, we'll create a file which we'll call index page. It will be an HTML file. All right, so this is our HTML file. And I'll do a bit of cheating. I'll copy the code over from my notepad. Now this is very basic HTML page setup. You have your head, you have your body. We'll give our page a title. And then we'll output some text as a paragraph. That is that. Now we go back to our, uh, my flaskapp.py file. Here we'll use another helper function which we'll import from the Flask module. And it's called render template. Now instead of just returning a string, hello world, we'll return uh, this function, render template, and, and pass our template name, which is index.html, as a parameter. And what Flask will do, we'll go into the templates folder and find a template with a given name. And now let's re rename that function. Doesn't really matter, but I would like to have something meaningful here. I'll call it index page. Save it. Let's restart our web server. Just stop it with Ctrl C and then restart. Now if we go back to our page, or you can just refresh it. Now you see that our page has a title and it picked up an HTML template and now we have a paragraph of text here. Now once our minimal application is running, it's time to start leaking NASA API data to it. When you subscribe to NASA API, you receive that email with a link which has your secret token in it and if you follow the link or you you do an HTTP request that link you receive this data so this data has few attributes like a date it's always today so I'm recording it on the 2nd of December so it's the 2nd of December now it has an explanation of what that picture is about it has a link to an actual picture it has a high resolution link to that picture also, there is this media type, because sometimes it's not a picture, sometimes it's a video. And if there is any copyright information, they also note it here in this JSON object. But like for today, it's public domain, so there is no copyright information. Now, let's go back to our myflaskapp.py. And first, we'll import a few modules that we're going to use. Uh, first one's called requests which we'll have to install through our virtual environment. And the other one is standard OS for interacting with operating system. Now let's go back to our virtual environment and install the requests module, which makes dealing with requests easy and simple. Okay, good. So now we could create a variable for our NASA API link All right so this is the standard string and then there goes your secret API key and for this tutorial will store your secret API key in the environmental variable and those will fetch it from the environmental variables. Now let's create an environmental variable with such a name in your system. I'm on Mac, so I'll edit a .bash profile file uh, which resides in my home directory. I will just do export my API key and then paste your key from the email.
And then because we need our system to pick up that environmental variable, I'll just open a new tab and again source my virtual, virtual environment. Okay, good. Now we go back to our .py file. Now, once we hit our web page, we want to make a call to the API and basically fetch all this information so we could display an image via the link. So here we create a request object and we make a call to our API link. So that creates a request and now we want to fetch all this information including the link to our picture of the day into a variable we'll call response which would be a dictionary. It will automatically convert this to a dictionary for us and then we can refer to different keys of this dictionary by their names. So I'll cheat again, I'll just copy paste something I did earlier basically what we have here here we have we instantiate the variables we use later in our template the first one is media URL it's the URL to our picture or the video also there is this media type because as I mentioned earlier it could be either image or video now there is always, always a title to the image it's somewhere here on the page there we go title and then there is description which is called explanation and sometimes there is a copyright text basically we say if there is copyright text in our response then fetch the credits. If not, it's public domain image. Now, what we'll do is we'll pass all these variables to our template, so our template can display them. We'll just go one by one. Copyright tags. We'll pass over the description text. Pass over title text I'll pass over the media type as well as media URL now as we pass all those parameters to our template we'll go to our template and start making use of those parameters so I'll remove this paragraph here and I'll cheat again I'll paste the code snippet that I prepared earlier and that's what's happening here. So everything that is in curly brackets and then the percentage sign, it's a template language. So we can embed if then else statement. So for example, here we're checking the value of the media type parameter, right? So here we pass the media type, which could be image or video. So here we check if it's image then put in an image HTML tag. If it's a video, put an iframe and display a video. If it's something different, I don't know, I, I put it just in case. We'll just output a text, didn't understand the media type. Now the same goes for all the other parameters. Title, copyright text and description text. Um, so here's the title. Here is a copyright text, here is our description text. I didn't do any like fancy CSS formatting, it just goes one by one. Um, we could have done, we could have implemented this logic here in the template here, but I just wanted to show that we could, we could decide where this logic belongs. I don't think there is right or wrong answer to that question. And now let's see how it all works together. We'll go back to our console, make sure that our virtual environment is activated. Now we'll launch our .py script. It will start a web server for us. 
we should run our web app on for 5000 as we did it before I'll copy over that URL to a browser or you could just simply reload your previously open tab and here we go so what happens here so today we apparently have a video instead of the image remember here I mentioned that we can have different types of media so today it was a video and here is a title here is the copyright so there is no copyright it's public domain and then description text here so that's how you build a simple flask app and run it on your local machine with the development server i hope it was useful for you so we learned a few concepts such as creating virtual environment right then basic if then else logic in python then referring to dictionary keys all that some some basic html really nice passing variables from PyScript to your HTML template also very useful so yeah hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and see you in the next videos